Hi, my name is Dave Greenway. This is HTXT Africa, and today we're reviewing the DSTV Explorer. Uh, this is DSTV's brand new uh, decoder. It replaces the HD PVR in the top of the lineup, and we're going to find out today whether it is in fact worth the 2499 retail price that they've set up for the device. First thing I want to go into is a bit of the hardware and specs changes that they've put inside the new decoder. What we've got is an, incre uh, an increase in the processor from 1.1 to 3 gigahertz. Most importantly for a lot of people, we're going from 500 gigs of storage to 2 terabytes of storage. So lots more space for recording your TV shows, uh, more space for DSTV catch-up and sports catch-up and things like that. And we've got, a uh, we've got now a gig of RAM instead of 500 megs of RAM, so things are going a lot faster in the interface. We'll show you that a bit later. What I first want to get into though is a couple of the ports and the hardware functions. On the back you've got uh, your standard VGA cables and an HDMI connector so that you can connect it directly to your TV. Obviously if you're going to want HD content you're going to need the HDMI cable which comes in the box which is quite a handy feature. Everything's color coded so that it's easier to set up um, all of the cables and uh, all of the ports at the back have matching colors so that when you get there it's not a difficult thing for you to be able to set up. Um, on the back of the box you'll also find three USB ports. Um, one of them uh, DSTV has actually confirmed that in the future they are looking at adding uh, wireless connectivity, 3G and Wi-Fi to it. This will have to be done by utilizing one of the USB ports on the back and obviously the others are there just in case they decide to use uh, external storage and let you uh, play some of your media file formats that you have installed on something like a flash drive or an external hard drive. Um, along with the uh, new decoder is a new remote. Um, you can go and check it out exactly what it looks like on the DSTV website. Um, there's a lot of new functionality built in, but the main thing you want to get onto is this giant blue button that's in the middle. That's going to control absolutely everything that you do. So without any further delay, uh, we've heard about all the specs. Let's actually see if this is anything decent to look at. Um, the first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of response. The second I push the DSTV button over here, this popped up. If you push catch up, it's about a one second delay on uh, the menu that you've pushed popping up. Everything feels a lot speedier and a lot more responsive, which is a very good thing from a DSTV point of view because uh, their, their interface was aging and it was starting to show up against uh, more modern interfaces of things like Netflix, which you could stream over devices. Um, although, albeit illegally in South Africa, but you could still feel what the rest of the world was getting up to. And DSTV's old uh, interface on their PVR and HD PVR decoders was aging slightly considering it hadn't had an upgrade in years. Um, the new interface is a lot more speedier. Um, what you do see is uh, everything is divided up, uh, it's divided up into sections so you can go to content that's just been added, um, you can go to your playlist, your box office catch up, things like that. Um, you can search through all of your content, you can plan out everything that you're doing. There's, there's a lot of thought that's gone into the, uh, the process and it seems to have made it a lot easier for us to navigate around at least. Um, things are a lot snappier, you'll notice that uh, menus pop up a lot quicker, you can customize a lot of the menus so you can take out all the help options here if you no longer need them. Um, it's, it's one of those things where as long as you start playing around with the decoder, you'll find more and more features that have been added into it. They're not all immediately uh, recognizable because um, you'll sort of get sucked into the interface and realize that it's just faster and snappier, but that's all you really want. You want, you want your experience to be faster and less painful than it was before. Um, jumping in here, once again, you'll see that uh, everything now has a, a very sort of DVD box style setup where you can see the art image for everything that's coming up, whether it be uh, movies or TV series or anything like that. Um, you can navigate through, if we go to watch now, you can go rent through box office is exactly the same. You've got your uh, DVD covers across there. Um, you can see exactly what the movie is about. You can watch short trailers on them. You can rent the movie directly now. Um, there's, there's a lot of thought that's gone into that and it, uh, once again it mirrors a lot of the, the uh, the type of interface that you'll see on international products that we, uh, we unfortunately don't really have access to here. Once again, um, the look and feel of the interface has been completely redesigned from that old grey and yellow letterboxing that we were used to on all the previous generations of PVR. We now have a nice um, black background uh, with a lot of blue detailing from uh, DSTV. You can also differentiate in content between catch-up content which is always in a blue background and box office content which always has a green background. 
Um, green obviously meaning money that you have to pay out to rent uh, whatever you're doing. But there's a lot, of, uh, a lot more intuitive interface that DSTV has brought into it. Things like your menus at the bottom over here, once you hit the OK button, you now get uh, a, a list of things that you can do with each set of content. So uh, if we went to a channel like uh, Mnet and you hit information, it pops up a logo on the side there, which hopefully in future will be populated by box art of the, the series or the movie that you're watching. It gives you a quick short description, which is nothing new from uh, what you used to see with DSTV, but now you get age ratings over there. You get to see which um, genre of series or movie that you're watching um, is a lot more. It shows you, if you hit the OK button, you get a, the list of options that once again comes up so you can watch it now. You can immediately record the episode. Um, you can record parts of the episode. And the great new thing that they've added is other airings over there. So if you've missed half the episode but you want to know when it'll next be on or when you can next record the entire episode, you can just go down to other airings over there, hit the button, and hopefully you'll find something else that you can watch later on or record the, the episode again. Um, there is a lot of intuitiveness that they have added into it and specifically around um, using the uh, four-way directional navigation button, so the up, down, left, right. All of that has become a lot more useful in the current DSTV Explorer than it was in the PVR. Previously, all you'd use it for was going up and down and pushing the info buttons. Now you can actually scroll around a three-dimensional, well, not a three-dimensional interface. Now you can scroll around an interface like this where you can go up and down, left and right, and you can go through each of the boxes a lot quicker than you could go through a typical list. That being said, if you want a list format, you can change how everything looks. Um, most of the pages have uh, options menus where you can go into uh, exactly how everything looks and figure out um, whether you'd prefer stuff to be in uh, a list view, in a grid view, uh, changing everything once again to your preference. Um, in terms of speed of the interface, as I've said before, they've, they've uh, increased the speed a lot. Um, if you push a button like catch up over there, it takes about a second to go from box office to catch up, back to the DSTV menu, to the TV guide. Everything is uh, it's quick, it's snappy, it's a lot more responsive than it used to be. There's no more waiting around for the system to catch up to what you were doing. It's a lot more uh, of an instant gratification sort of feel where you're like, I want to watch something on box office, I push the box office button, I hit the rent, it uh, pushes through the code and you're done. If you want to catch up on one of your favorite TV series, you can go through to there. In box office catch up, you can uh, catch up either movies, series, sports, or other shows. If you choose series, um, one of the nice additions uh, with the DSTV Explorer is that you now have multiple episodes to be able to watch. You can hit the uh, options button to launch a display menu. Um, you can either sort them alphabetically by their ratings, uh, which ones are expiring earliest, newest first, oldest first. So basically what you can do is you can customize exactly how you view television. If you're someone who only gets to watch TV on the weekend and you want to see what's expiring first so that you can watch it before it falls out of DSTV catch up, you can immediately go to that menu, find out what TV shows are pushing out and uh, go through there. If you want to do it, uh, organize it by A to Z like we have over here, you can go filter out and you'll notice that there is more than one episode of most of the shows over here. And that's because um, with the increase in space, uh, with increase in hard drive space, there's now 220 hours of possible recording of shows, plus an increase of uh, DSTV catch up. So there's now more episodes uh, per series that is being, um, that is being kept on your box um, so that you can watch in case you missed last week's episode as well. You can get episode three and episode two just so that you can catch up. If, ep if, uh, you, if episode two was about to expire and uh, you've watched that and you really want to watch episode three, it's already available. Um, once again, you know, adding more features in like that gives a more polished experience, sort of what you'd see in a uh, Netflix product or a Hulu product overseas where you're able to stream everything. But because of the nature of satellite television, this is uh, bridging the gap by creating more of a buffer of content available for you to go through. With the increase in space on the hard drive, uh, DSTV are also able to now give you more titles available to rent in their box office service. Obviously looking to drive more revenue through their rentals model, but uh, you now get up to 30 titles to rent over here. You can scroll through, watch trailers, um, buy something immediately, start streaming it. Um, all of the titles are pre-downloaded to the box. No streaming of it is necessary, so those titles do rotate through and change through the course of the month. As DSTV explained to us, the reason behind increasing the space and allowing for all of this content is because they were seeing a challenge from uh, people 
taking on, taking on subscription video services and realizing that uh, on-demand content is a lot better than just having the content that was pushed to you on regular broadcast television. While we may not be at a stage where we can offer a ubiquitous um, video streaming service in South Africa because of things like broadband penetration and uh, other criteria like that, um, what DSTV is attempting to do here is take their current install base and creates a service that bridges the gap between what we have with regular broadcast terrestrial television and this. And for a first effort, this is actually not bad. The interface is really good. Um, they offer an extensive amount of content. And for people who have never experienced a video on demand service and who've only up till now experienced um, satellite terrestrial television that MultiChoice has been offering in the past through their PVR decoders, this will feel like a drastic increase in functionality. Um, you have more things to watch. The interface is a lot more speedy. Um, there's, there is a video on demand element to it with box office, so they will be able to start experimenting with that. What it doesn't give is uh, the ability to go back um, further in TV shows. Um, at the launch, we remember them saying that uh, you should be able to get up to four episodes of each television show available. And uh, what we've seen is um, over the last few weeks, we've been watching um, the DSTV uh, catch up um, in the series section specifically to find out if we were getting um, four episodes of everything. And we've noticed that we only seem to be getting two episodes, um, which obviously they're getting more series into the catch up. But uh, we feel mildly cheated out there because we were told that uh, you'd get four episodes of back catalogue. Maybe they've done a bit of a usage case model and seen that people aren't watching stuff that far back and people are far more engaged in the service and only need two weeks. Um, but um, we would like to see potentially more episodes going back in time so that uh, less series are being caught up on but you can go further back just in case you went on holiday or something like that. You may have missed out on quite a few episodes of your TV show and you'll no longer be able to see them unless you, of course, PVR'd them. MultiChoice has also opened up an app platform on the uh, DSTV Explorer. Um, the entire thing is run on a Linux sub-variant, which they have used uh, other NASPARS companies to help them program. Um, so what they can now do is create uh, applications for us. Obviously, at the moment, the only applications that are on the system are from uh, companies that are associated to uh, MultiChoice. So you've got News and Weather 24 and Supersport Active that are on there at the moment. But each of these apps takes a little bit of time to lo load up. It comes over the top of your TV. You'll notice that your streaming TV goes up to the top. They are a bit slower than uh, the regular interface, and we'll have to forgive them for that because obviously they can't control the entire user interface but, or user experience. But um, the reason that this is interesting is at the launch, DSTV intimated that they would be opening up the platform to other people to develop applications for them. Um, obviously, at the moment, limited to uh, stuff that Naspers, um produces in-house, but um, hopefully they'll open up that content to other of their channel partners, so you could potentially in the future see something from uh, Sky or BBC News or something like that, as well as News 24, so that you could catch up on uh, international news, um, as well as seeing potentially uh, BBC Food, things like that coming in for other genres of entertainment to get more out of the, uh, the app section. Um, while the app section is great, there's not much more that uh, people get out of this than they used to get with the previous decoders. Uh, you were able to get News 24 and Weather 24, and you were able to get this uh, super sport um, menu, uh, menu out of uh, the last PVR decoder. Um, what you do get now is a lot quicker load times and increased, uh, increased speed navigating, navigating through everything, uh, whereas the old one tend to take a lot of time to get through everything. The big question is, is this worth the price? You're going up to 2499 from around 1500 Rand for an HD PVR. Um, obviously, with the uh, Explorer coming out, you'll potentially see a lot of deals from uh, installers on getting cheaper HD PVRs out there. Um, the Explorer is a massive upgrade from things that you've seen before. If you're a DSTV premium subscriber and your family watches a lot of television, um, and are heavily involved in the ecosystem that is DSTV, then this could be a very good upgrade for you. There's a lot of uh, added functionality and features that you get out of an Explorer that you don't get from a standard HD PVR decoder. Um, the interface is a lot better. It's a lot more pleasing to use. Um, it's definitely faster. There's more space to record everything. And if these are things that you've found that uh, you're irritated by your current PVR, um, because it is unable to do these things or you seem to be running out of space or taking too much time to load menus, then a DSTV Explorer is probably something for you. We think that it's uh, the best showcase at the moment of an, in, um, the best interface at least of any of the uh, 
satellite television products that we've used. It definitely offers more functionality than most of the others, but all of this does come at a premium. DSTV is still the most expensive uh, broadcast television service in the country. With that, they bring the most amount of content. This is, a, this is a question you have to ask yourself as a usage case. Is this something you use more of than anything else in your house? If yes, then you should probably be upgrading to the DSTV Explorer. It's that much better.